Let's now take a look at the concepts of adequacy and fluency in the context of machine translation and its goals. In this presentation, I will be drawing on and quoting from Chapter 1 of Philip Kern's textbook, Neural Machine Translation. We live in a world with roughly 7,000 living languages. There are many situations where we encounter content, be it spoken, written, or otherwise, that we want to consume. We want to communicate. We want to read. We want to listen. We want to watch movies in a language that we may not understand. Who are the people who bring us this content? They are translators who bring us the written word and interpreters who bring us the spoken word. Translation is nearly always an approximation. Translating and interpreting are very challenging professions. Translators and interpreters have to make choices all the time. And in different contexts, different choices will be made. Even in the same context, different people, different translators and different interpreters will very often make different choices. Occasionally, it is the case that translating a sentence can be done perfectly, exactly, where both the meaning and the style of the original cleanly and easily comes across. However, the situation that I just mentioned is the exception. It's not the norm. The norm involves balance. And that balance very often is a balance between adequacy and fluency. Adequacy and fluency are two of the main competing goals involved in creating a good translation. Adequacy means retaining the meaning of the original text. Fluency, on the other hand, requires producing output text that reads just like any well-written text in the target language. It is very common for these goals, adequacy and fluency, to be in conflict. It is often the case that maintaining the meaning of the original sentence can make a translation clumsy. Different situations call for different levels of adequacy versus fluency. In other words, depending on the circumstances, the translator or interpreter may make different choices. In the text domain, different genres will often make different trade-offs. In the context of literature, it's often important that style comes through that the text flows well. And in that situation, it may be acceptable to completely change the meaning of some of the text in order to maintain the overall spirit of the text. A good example of this can come in the translation of song lyrics. In translating song lyrics, it is usually more important that the translated song sounds right and carries across the desired emotion of the original songwriter. Contrast this with translating an operations manual or a legal text. In those circumstances, it's not nearly as important that the text is fluent or that the spirit of the text comes across, it's important that the exact meaning come across. So 
in those cases, it may well be fine to produce wooden and awkward phrases if this is the only way to express the exact same facts.